Hey kids, it's a bit of floor here, hope you're well. Out and about today, another bike review for you. It's the Honda CB650R, brand new for 2021. Sporty naked four cylinder. If you're interested in this bike, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so the CB650R then is a bike that sort of passed me by. It first came out in 2019 and it's had some uh, updates for 2021, notably better suspension and some other tweaks that I'll talk about later. But I've never ridden one of these before. I've had lots of people say to me, when are you going to ride the CB650R? So at last, I'm getting to do it this time. So uh, this is the first time I've ridden the bike. This is going to be very much my first impressions review. As usual, I'll tell you all the practical things about the bike. And a little bit later, I'll give you a walk around as well and talk you through the spec in the usual way. It's an absolutely freezing day today. It's about zero degrees, so I'm not going to be uh, going absolutely mad on the bike, unfortunately, because there could be some ice around. You can still see some little bits of frozen bits and pieces at the side of the road. But nonetheless, it's a beautiful day to be out riding. So let's see what the uh, CV650R is all about. Okay, so the first thing that strikes you when you get on any new bike is what's the seating position like? Well, on this, I'd describe it as quite sporty. I'm not leant forward too much. There's no wrist, uh, no weight on my wrists. But my uh, legs are tucked up quite tight in a, what I would call a sporty position. I thought this was going to feel a bit like the street triple. But in fact, it feels a little bit more sporty. You're maybe not leant forward quite as much as on the uh, streety, but your legs are certainly tucked up tighter. The seat itself is relatively hard, I would say. Just being a little bit careful in case there's any ice about. But overall, it's a comfortable position. I mean, it's a naked bike at the end of the day. It's not a sports bike. So you could ride it for a fair few hours, I'd say, without getting into any sort of grief. Well, not only is the ice about today, but there's mud on the road here. Look at this, this is disgusting. This is what farmers do to the lanes around here. It's just outrageous, because this puts bikers, I would argue, in danger. Look at it. Be careful through this frozen stuff. So yeah, so the seat's a little bit hard, but you can move around on it. So if you're slightly taller than me, I'm five foot eight. So sort of a medium sized fella. I'm perfectly comfortable on here. If you're a very tall person, you might find it a bit cramped, I think. Next up, what's the ride like in terms of suspension? Well, I would put it in my uh, famous Goldilocks zone. It's not too firm, it's not too soft. It's set just so the handling's nice. And the handling is lovely on this, it's a nice and light feeling bike. It's a four cylinder, so it's got that cracking engine note to it. Let's wind her up a bit down here. Yeah, she sounds absolutely lovely. A few very high frequency vibes through the seat when you wind her up. Nothing too intrusive, but they are there nonetheless. But back to go, the uh, tune on this is just where you need it. So for real world riding on the roads, it's got plenty of power. You don't need any more than the 650 on the roads. You really don't. Handlebars are quite nice and wide. The feeling of control is good on it. Not too intimidating. This would be an excellent first big bike if you're uh, in the market for something like this. I love the looks of it. It's in this uh, blue paint scheme that I'll show you in a minute. I think it looks great and I love the uh, the four downpipes as well at the front from the four cylinders. Looks epic and sounds great. I guess if I were in the market for a bike of this type that it'd be between this and the uh, Triumph Trident for me. So it's worth uh, comparing the two. Of course there's no wind protection on here, it is a naked bike and the wind blast is straight at you but it's nice and clean. It's not dirty uh, wind flow, it's not all turbulent blast at you. Which on some bikes you do suffer from, but this is uh, absolutely fine. Right, nothing behind me. Just going to check the brakes on here. Alright, front brake. Oh yeah, it works really nicely. Let's try the rear. 
Yeah, it rear's a bit soft, but that's the case often on motorcycles, isn't it? It's there, it's fine for dragging through some corners, but uh, not great from a stopping power point of view. Mirrors work beautifully, no vibrations. They're nice and big, and I like the fact they're quite short here as well. I'm not looking at my shoulder, I can see behind me fine, but they're not too stalky, I quite like those. Take it easy around here, there's sometimes some frozen patches. I have to say, although it's a cold day, it's, as I say, it's about around about freezing when I'm filming this. I'm pretty toasty, I've got my uh, heated gloves on and my Blauer winter top. If you stick around to the very end of the video, I'll do my now infamous fashion segment and I'll talk you through everything I'm wearing. Just to save uh, you asking, what was that jacket you were wearing, whatever, I had a lot of people comment on this top. So I'll talk to you a bit about that at the very end of the video after the credits, so stick around for that if you're interested. Okay, let's just uh, check this clutch. The clutch is quite nice and uh, quite nice and light on the bike. Whoops. <laughs> but it's uh, it's quite a long reach on this. It's quite a long way out until you get to the biting point compared to what I'm used to. I'm sure that could be adjusted out if you don't like that. But I'm still kind of getting used to the bike given this is my first ride on it. But it is nice and light. Switch gear on here. It's lovely and positive. These are proper buttons, look. You can tell when you've pressed them. There's no mistaking. Still getting used to that biting point, though. And it is a relatively simple machine, so there's no complicated electronics on here. It has got traction control, which is switchable. There's a button just here, look, with the T on the top of it. If you hold that, you can turn the traction control off, but why you'd want to do that, I've no idea, but there we go, it is switchable traction control. And of course it's got ABS, so you've got uh, a degree of protection there against the wheels locking up. But other than that, nothing else, and that's something I like about this bike. It's proper, honest motorcycling with not too much electronics to get in the way to spoil your enjoyment of the bike. I guess the only thing it's lacking that, from an electronics point of view, I maybe would like, is a rain mode. I quite like a rain and a road mode on a bike, and nothing more required really, but this one doesn't have that. In terms of uh, instrumentation, it's got this neat little uh, LCD display on here. It's like a reverse negative display. I think it looks really good. It's got a proper fuel gauge, clock, trip meters, everything you need basically, and nothing else besides, including a gear position indicator, which is uh, something I quite like. Talking of the gearbox, it's got an intriguing uh, gear lever arrangement, which I'll show you in a minute when I do the walk round. But the gearbox is perfectly nice. I have noticed a couple of false neutrals already might just be because this is a new bike not even run in yet and i've also noticed that it's a little bit tricky to get into neutral which is a sort of a pet hate of mine but that might just be a matter of getting used to the bike i'm not used to riding four cylinder machines i don't own a four cylinder bike myself and this is just so smooth compared to the twins that i normally ride it's a beautiful engine on here but you do have to wind it up it does sound quite angry most of the time even when you're riding at uh, you know, what you'd consider relatively slow speeds. All right, I'm just coming up to uh, the little Chilton town of Wendover here. I'm wondering if I can pull into the pub and do the walk around, show you the bike and talk you through the spec without annoying anyone. Let's go and have a look. Surely not hurting anyone here. All right, let's stick it here because it might make quite a nice photograph on this little bit of snow. Don't say I don't ride in all weathers for you. Right, let's find neutral. That time, very, very easy. Side stand, easy to get down. In terms of um, getting your feet on the deck, with the bike upright, look, my feet are flat on the floor. I'm five foot eight with a uh, 32 inch leg, not an inseam, but 32 inch in my trousers. So sort of, again, medium sized fella. I can get my feet flat on the deck, no worries. Alrighty, let's kill her then, and have a look at this machine. Here we go. The 2021 Honda CB650R in a really nice blue colour. I do like the finishes on this bike. I love the fact that it's got gold wheels or bronzish wheels. Why don't more bike manufacturers do that? And the matching forks look great. And I love this bit of uh, powder coating or whatever this is on the engine as well. Just sets it off. I think in terms of colourways, Honda have got this smack on. Anyway, let me get the specs out and I'll talk you through them in the usual way. 
Okay, here she is then, the uh, Honda CV650R for 2021. Uh, new for 2021, as I say, because it's got uh, various upgrades as well as uh, new suspension on this bike. But let's go through the spec in the usual way. Now, this is a bike that um, Honda describe as a Neo Sports Cafe middleweight. I've no idea what one of those is, but it sure is a cool-looking machine. There's those uh, four downpipes I was telling you about at the front that just look so cool. Uh, fun and games polishing those up, no doubt. Anyway, let's talk through the spec in the usual way. The engine here, there's 649cc four-cylinder double overhead cam with 16 valve engine i love the way they've done that uh, the finish on there i just think it looks lovely uh power wise puts out 94 brake horsepower or 70 kilowatts if you're newfangled at 12,000 rpm so it is a revy old machine and there is a restricted version available if you're an a2 license holder as well so uh, suitable for everybody this torque wise 63 newton meters of torque or 47 foot pounds in the old money at 9,500 rpm uh, brakes wise on here let's have a look at these uh, the fronts felt pretty good they're Nissan calipers as you can see uh, and they're on dual 310 mil discs on the front at the back it's a single pot Nissan uh, and that's on again as you'd expect a, a 240 mil disc on the back uh, suspension wise this is the new suspension as I say for the bike this year uh, on the front here 41 mil uh, show a separate function big fist and upside down uh, forks so these are the ones where you've got uh, one adjustment on that side and one on the other if you see what I mean not that these are adjustable in this case but they they carry their functions separately so one's rebound one's compression something like that anyway you get the idea they're fancy forks they certainly look good anyway um, what else at the back it's got a what uh, Honda's website describes as a monoshock damper with 10 stage adjustable preload uh, so there we go that's that nesting in there and a nice yellow spring as well if you like a bit of bling uh, seat height on here uh, quite Quite friendly 810 millimeters so lowish it feels quite narrow even though it's a four-cylinder bike and as i say i can get my feet flat on the deck so that's fine curb weight of this bike so um with fuel in which is nice to hear uh, from honda is 202 uh, kilograms so by my calculation it's about 190 kilograms dry feels quite nice and light and that fuel tank there holds 15.4 liters which is about the going rate for a bike of this type uh, electronics wise as I say just what you need to know more switchable traction control wise switch it off I don't know ABS it's got uh, LED lights all around uh, definitely needs a tail tide look at that back end and it's got those lights on here where they the indicators are like running lights if I turn it on here we go see when it's just turned on the indicators are on as running lights I'm not sure if I like that or not but more and more bikes seem to be doing that these days but the headlight looks quite cool with that kind of halo surround alrighty let's just turn her off again and then of course the most important thing or one of the more important things is how much is this going to cost you well again according to the website seven thousand two hundred and ninety nine pounds uh, which i think is a pretty good price for comparison triumph trident is seven thousand one hundred and ninety five so it's about 100 quid more than the trident so you know kind of take your choice i guess on what one you like the look of uh, it's available in various colors this one's the blue which i like is also available in pearl gray metallic black candy red um and there we go uh it's also euro 5 compliant and that's what the changes to the engine internals were all about basically too uh, to make the thing Euro 5 compliant as so many bikes have done this year alright there we go alright I don't want to freeze to death so let's uh, put that camera away jump on ride her some more well, just before we do jump on and ride her again I said I'd, they had a weird gear lever let me just show you this look the, the gear lever to my mind is on sort of back to front uh, you use it in the normal way of course and then it's got this quite massive linkage here up to actually change the gear I've not seen that arrangement before quite different anyway there we go uh, that's that right better be a bit careful as I come off of here because obviously there's a little bit of snow on the deck I don't want to slide off does all its usual things you start it up excellent right let's just uh, come over here on the car park and see what it's like in terms of turning circle just make sure the snow's gone off the tires right so down the middle of this one let's just see full lock there we go I started in the middle of that long one and then full lock got round here so quite a tight turning circle actually quite quite good Alrighty, as ever, I must say a huge thank you to uh, Honda UK who've loaned me this bike to get to know. It's a great little machine. I think naked bikes of this size are the way to go these days. You can actually use them properly on the road. Just wondering where to go, actually. Let's go and have a little look down Wendover Way. It's a beautiful little town, this is. Looking quite busy today. We're all waiting, okay? Well, I'll go then. 
hate it when that happens. <laughs> okay, so after this sort of first ride on the bike, what's my sort of lasting impression, I guess, or my feelings of the bike just based on this one short ride? Well, not much not to like about it, really. It is relatively cramped, I guess. And that, uh, that gearbox is a little bit, um, you know, you do have that problem of the odd false neutral. Might just be a matter of the gearbox getting worked in a bit because, as I say, this bike hasn't hasn't even been run in yet. Other than that, not really much not to like about it. It sounds great, goes really nice. The riding position is basically comfortable, albeit the seat is a little bit hard. But that's a common complaint on many bikes I have these days. Maybe I've just got a particularly bony backside. And the price is uh, is good at just over seven grand. But the thing is, this is a compa you know a competitive segment these days, particularly with things like the uh, Triumph Trident that doesn't seem to get bad reviews anywhere. This, uh, to my mind, has better looks than the Trident. And of course, it being a Honda, it's bound to have that legendary Honda reliability. This ain't going to go wrong on you. So I guess it just comes down to which one you like the looks of most. Anyway, I'm hoping to get uh, another ride or two out of the bike before it has to go back to Honda. So do stick around and stay tuned to the channel uh, if you are interested in this machine. And don't forget as well to wait until after the credits if you want the lowdown on the kit that I'm wearing this time. I'll do my little fashion segment, as I say, talk you through that. But that uh, otherwise is pretty much it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you've not done so already. I don't just do bike reviews here on the Missenden Flyer. But I do uh, monthly bike news, I do the odd live stream, I do bits and pieces in the garage about how to look after your bike and fettling, that sort of thing. Basically, anything and everything to do with motorcycles, I'll try and cover it here on the Missenden Flyer. It'd be great to have you along next time. All right, until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio. Well, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video for my now infamous fashion segment, the opportunity I get to talk you through the kit that I'm wearing and to save me having to type all those comments where you ask me what was that jacket you're wearing or whatever, which seems to happen quite a bit. Okay, so let's work from the top to the bottom. Start with the helmet. This is my trusty Shoei NXR, which you've seen me wear many times. It's one of my go-to helmets. Uh, I find it great for vlogging, and it being a Shoei, it just gives ultimate protection. I find it very comfortable as well. If you want one of these, the cost of them uh, are start at £341.95. I'll put a link below to Sports Bike Shop, which is... Uh, somewhere I don't have any connection with but uh, I just find they have great service and great prices there as well and heads up if you do click on the link below and you go there and you buy something I do get a little bit of a kickback it's what's called an affiliate link so just for full disclosure there but no extra cost to you anyway that's the showy NXR uh, a helmet I recommend they don't actually do this color scheme anymore by the way so uh, so there we go so uh, but they do others as well that are equally as good all right you might be wondering about this hat I'm wearing this is quite new this is from my own uh, uh, website www.themissionandflyer.com it's my beanie hat it'll cost you 16 quid I think yeah 16 quid an absolute bargain and while you're there you might want to check out the TMF neck tube that doubles up as a handy Covid mask you can get these I think they're 8 quid on www.themissionandflyer.com all right moving down this jacket that you saw me wearing uh, this is called a Blower HT winter pull I've worn this all through the winter I've had lots of comments about it I think it's quite smart looking I've got loads of stuff in the pockets at the moment so it's making me look like the Michelin man but it's really really warm it's a sub zero day today it's minus one as I'm filming this uh, but this is like wearing a sleeping bag it's got protection in the shoulders and the elbows it's not great for abrasion protection unfortunately but if heat and warmth is your main requirement then this is a great jacket so I recommend them again price wise if you go to sports bike shop again I'll put a link below to that the uh, Blower HT Winterpool 259 pounds I've had this for two winter seasons now and I can't recommend it highly enough I think it looks good uh, I'll even wear this off the bike when I'm out for a walk and what have you all right that's that next up all oh, trousers here we go these are my Dane uh, trousers these are Gore-Tex Pro and uh, they are very expensive actually they're excellent though and the reason why I'm wearing them now is not because I'm thinking it's going to rain but they just keep you so warm on a winter's day so these are called the Dane Lingby Gore-Tex Pro textile trousers they're $529.99 a salty price but believe you me if you're riding bikes all year round as I do I mean at the end of the day this is my job so it's kind of you know I'm a professional rider you could say these days uh, then you need proper kit and stuff like the Dane kit is absolutely brilliant it keeps you warm there's no need for heated kit you know or heated trousers at least when you got these on I've also got the jacket which I'll wear as well on a pretty regular basis anyway there we go links below to that what next uh, boots Oxford boots these are much better value these are my Digby short boots you've seen them before uh, they've just got they've got reinforced uh, 
bits in the toe and around the ankles and uh, I just think again they're they're smart off the bike as well as being uh, useful on the bike with all the right protection as well they will cost you 97 pounds 49 if you want a pair of them I think that's quite good value for some proper uh, biking uh, boots and then last but not least the gloves you saw me wear I get lots of questions about these as well these are those these are my Kais G701s I had done a review on these somewhere they look like that uh, they're great from a protection point of view they are waterproof as well and crucially they are heated so on a day like today on a bike like this that doesn't have heated grips they're absolutely brilliant uh, they'll keep your hands nice and warm for a good hour after that the batteries tend to give out but if you're doing sort of hour long journeys or you're commuting or whatever you want a good protective waterproof winter glove that will keep you warm then I do recommend the Kais G601s or 701s these are the 701s which were new this year anyway that's it for now hope that was uh, of some interest don't forget to say links below and uh, yeah hope that was of some interest speak to you again soon